From August 7 to October 14, 2012, the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles is presenting the Second International Textile Art Biennial, or ITAB. This exhibition provides a unique opportunity for textile artists who use technology and their processes, content, or materials. The exhibition features 44 artworks by 37 artists from Australia, Canada, China, Finland, France, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and from across the United States, making this a truly international exhibition. You will see digital machine embroidery, checkered weaving, Photoshop manipulation, laser engraving, computer-aided design, computer processing, 3D software, LED lights, and video employed in the artworks. A supply of technological materials, CDs, fiber optic cables, reel-to-reel -reel tape, reflective materials, repurposed photographic dye sublimation ribbon, add underlying content and a provocative richness to the artworks displayed here at ITAB. Combining the traditional techniques of the textile medium with current technology is a fascinating journey into the 21st century and a rich connection to the enduring legacy of the past. Concurrent with the ITAB show is AIDS Quilt Interactive, touching 1.3 million square feet. The AIDS Quilt Interactive is a 42-inch touchscreen tabletop that allows users to search through and examine detailed individual images for 1.3 million square feet of the AIDS Memorial Quilt. 2012 marks the 25th anniversary of the AIDS Memorial Quilt and 30 years of life with AIDS. Curator Deborah Crissini guides us through the exhibition. Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles Second International Tech Style Art BNL. We had inaugurated this exhibition in 2010 and we brought it back again this year with a new panel of jurors, Janet Copeless. Barbara Lane and Christine Tarakowski, and a whole new group of, a whole new pool of people entered this exhibit. It's an exhibition that deals with textiles and technology. Artists working with textiles in either the theme of their work, with materials that come from technological fields, or with technological processes. And it's a very interesting exhibit, a mixture of all of these different things. Behind me on this wall is a beautiful piece by Paula Ehrenberg Medorius, and it is a digital print that she created. She probably drew it and then manipulated it in Photoshop, and it's an example of the kind of work that is available, the kind of processes that artists are um, able to use at this time. Typically, a wallpaper or a fabric would be in a repeated design and every 12 or 24 inches the, the fabric would be a repeat but in this case with the new technology she can use a complete image a scene with a landscape and a pineapple field and transport it through electronics through Photoshop to a company that can create a small run so this is a one-off of an image that she created inspired by a visit to a pineapple farm. And it's really just an amazing piece. It, it makes you feel like you're in a lush tropical plantation. On this wall, we have other examples of artists who are using digital materials to create their work. This is by Goodney Campbell. And she uses Photoshop as well to alter her images that she took of Mount Rainier. And again, it's manipulated in Photoshop, printed on cloth. This cloth has a bit of a texture to it, so it has a really nice feeling, like you're looking through some mist. 
and um, it's hand it's quilted, machine quilted, and it's just a very lovely piece. Another example of how an artist is using Photoshop to create her own fabric and to create a small quilt. Patty Shaw is an artist who was in the show in 2010 as well, and she, this year she submitted a piece which is of HTML code, the code that you use to create your website. And this is her website. She thinks of it as a language, a calligraphy, and it's very beautiful in its own right. And how she created this, it's a whole cloth, and she painted it with bleach, so it discharged the color of the cloth. Bleach, of course, is a common household item, and, and so she's using this technological language and then combining it with a very common material, and on top of it, she's embroidered the, um, the HTML code, and then the background is zeros and ones. So again, she worked with a theme of textile and high-tech, low-tech. I think one of my favorite pieces in the show is the, this piece that by Regina Benson. Regina uses hand-dyed fabrics, mostly natural dyed, um, fabrics that she puts in the earth or that she uses plant material to dye. And then she's applied them to the CDs and they're, every one of them is a different pattern. They're really quite beautiful. She's um, drilled holes in them and attached them and then stitched through them as well with these red threads. And it's just this wonderful curtain and a very beautiful um, use of the DNA of plant material and the embedded code in a CD. And if you can come around the back, the back side is very lovely because it's got um, plants also embedded in the back of the CD. Donna Lish has created a forest with crochet out of repurposed photographic uh, dye sublimation paper. It's a material that I'm really unfamiliar with, but it's again, a very simple technique, but it's using this idea of this material that has had an image in it, a photographic image, and so that sort of alter ghost image is appearing here in this forest. But I actually look at it in a different way. I, I look at it as um, stalactites or a Dr. Seuss environment. It's a really kind of fun and interesting piece. Janice Lesman Moss is an artist who uses digital technology also. She's a weaver and she uses digital jacquard. They are probably created in, in Photoshop and they're very complicated designs, and this is one of the things that in, you can do with digital jacquard weaving because you don't need to create a repeat. So to look at this piece, you see the two layers intertwining, the top layer and the background layer, and it's this complete maze of design. And in a typical fabric, you would need to see repeat every 20 inches or so, and in this, there is no repeat. I mean, I've looked at it, it's just an amazing piece. And um, it's contrasted with a uh, felt border, like, almost like a blanket that's, that's hanging behind it. And it's so interesting to have that idea of the technology of the digital jacquard weaving backed by felting, which is one of the most primitive and earliest kinds of ways to make a textile and a fiber. So these are two beautiful pieces. The same is true of this. There's no repeat on it. An artist could only create this with the tools of um, Photoshop and the jacquard weaving. What jacquard weaving is, it allows an individual harness to be raised independently. So instead of having a pattern repeat, an artist can create an infinite variety of designs and textiles, and Janice is such, this is a tour de force, I think, in terms of what she's been able to do with that. This is by a young artist, Laura Fisher. 
and she created her work on old army felt blankets. Laura is actually not a fiber artist, but she had a mysterious urge to create quilts. And so this is her contemporary version of a quilt. It's a felt blanket with a metallic surface applied to it. It's, there's a little bit of day glow in it, and then she hand embroidered the stitching with a shiny day glow um, plastic fiber. And I think the army cuts are really interesting to embellish this simple um, gray cot, gray bed with these traditional patterns. It's just, it's a really interesting idea. Wendy Hunstead is an artist who uses a traditional process of kapa cloth making, which is a traditional Hawaiian bark cloth. It's a very laborious hand process. So she makes this traditional kapa. This piece was actually, the origin of it was a piece that she had already created and she manipulated it in a 3D rendering program and then took an image of that and created this image from her original piece that was manipulated in this rendering program. It's all hand done, it's hand stitched, and it's made with kappa, and yet she used the tools of contemporary technology to make, to, to inspire her. This is a piece by Australian artist Brett Alexander and it's his own fabrication in terms of his LED light sources and how the computer runs these lights. But it's really a quintessential thread piece, electronic thread piece of optic lights. It's really quite beautiful and peaceful and it came all the way from Australia. So our show is truly international and um, it's just this wonderful tangle of threads and and speaks to the textile medium in an electronic version. On this wall, we have a piece by Korean artist Jung Kim, and she's using materials that she finds. And these are, in fact, hair nets in different shades of gray. So the, the piece is really She's using materials that are out there in the world that are manufactured, they're textile, textilian, and yet they're very low tech in terms of how she creates them. This is a very stunning piece by Jean Kim, the Korean artist. And again, she's using plastic netting, probably the kind of netting that you find around food bags or uh, lemons or fruit. And it's just, it's kind of a charming, wonderful, funky piece. It's this man-made material, but it's manufactured. And then she's hand-sewn the squares together and it's kind of charming and quirky. It reminds me of a fisherman's net or a kite. It's very free floor, form. This is a translucent QR code by Barbara Nippon. And it's one of my favorite pieces in the exhibit. This, the codes are found everywhere on the back of magazines and just, I guess, everywhere. And here it is in a translucent silk version. You can actually put your phone up to it and it reads 2012 high tech, which is pretty cool. And, um, the, the method of this, it looks like and was inspired by a traditional Korean hojaje cloth, which is a wrapping cloth. And it's just a wonderful translation of an old technique and modern technology. Leslie Terrazon Markoff is a San Francisco artist. This piece is called Opens Manifesto. And it was done in conjunction with an artist and chef group. 
and it's a manifesto. It's about their group. It's done in a digital jacquard, and it's woven with aluminum foil, a very high-tech processing um, material, and she had to repurpose it by folding it and scrunching it up and weaving with it. So it's a very different look from the previous jacquard weavings that I showed you. Amiko Nakano is a Japanese artist who again is using jacquard weaving to create her pieces. In this case, it's a photograph of Machu Picchu, the Incan site, religious site, and um, it's interesting that she's using high technology of the jacquard, photo photography, digital jacquard, and looking back at ancient Peruvian history. She also uses stretchy fabrics, so it creates some interesting surface textures on the piece. Dari Sichon and Anita Tovino are a collaborating duo. Dari is lo a local artist and Anita is from Finland. And together they make these beautiful installation pieces. The, on the back of this piece is a scene of a forest that was taken, a photograph taken in Finland. I'm going to just lift the curtain up for a moment. And then on the scrim in front is a clip of the Pacific Ocean at Ocean Beach. So you can see the photograph of the forest and the ocean. This is a piece by Taiwanese artist Wen Yun Hang, and it's a jacquard weaving, which is meant to be seen in three lights. So we have regular light, and then it, the light goes into a, it goes off, and then there's a glow light, and you see different patterns emerging in the different lights. So she writes that her works are inspired by the major disasters that have happened in the world. The um, earthquake and tsunami in Japan and other natural disasters. And you can see this image of a scream, a primal scream of a child in the day glow light. It's really a powerful piece. And all of this day glow it's not painted on, it's woven in, and it, she can do that because of the jacquard weaving. She also did another piece called Lotus. And again, Lotus is about the transformation of life. The, it's a very spiritual flower, and it has to do with the life processes, birth, growing, and decay, and then rebirth again. And so. Um, I think when you see this in the light, you get an understanding of that piece. Yes. Yuniko Tanaka is a local um, San Jose artist, and her piece refers to the traditional Japanese kimono and the importance of that tradition, but um, how it deals with a technological world and the fast-paced movement of the highway and the fast-paced and, and that balance of the traditional with the modern.
tango with a techno quiz captures exactly how I feel when I'm dealing with all the latest technology. I feel that I'm swimming in a sea and, and all of the old gadgets are sinking below as I try to figure out how to work the new devices. So she's captured in a very humorous way and um, she's using commercially printed fabric, fabric that's available, and machine quilting and, and it's really an exuberant understatement of what's going on in our contemporary society. We are really lucky to be premiering the AIDS Quilt Interactive touching 1.3 million square feet. This is a premiere of this table which um, showcased at the recent exhibit in, in Washington, the Folklife exhibit on this, at the Smithsonian where the entire AIDS quilt was laid out for the first time since 1996. And the AIDS quilt, of course, has grown. It's a memorial to all of those who have lost their lives to AIDS and HIV. So what this screen allows you to do is to go from, um, to see the whole quilt, and then it, whoops, it's a computer, so it does its own thing sometimes, to blow up, to go into individual squares. So you can see a block. Oh, it's very active today. <laughs> or you can find a name of someone. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Let's try this person, David Davis. There, and his quilt comes up over here. He was city San Francisco, other city San Diego, and there's his block right here. And you can press on that block, and it comes, it finds the block on the whole AIDS quilt. And there he is, David Davis. So it's a great tool for people to come and see their loved ones or friends or, or just to look at the end enormous scope of this tragedy. Okay, and this on the wall here behind you? Well, on the wall, on the wall we have amazing examples, three examples of actual panels. So on the wall we have examples of three actual panels. So these are panels that give you an idea of the scale of the AIDS quilt. Each of the panels is three feet by six feet, the size of a typical grave or a shroud. So the scale of it is, has always been an important um, scale and it, it, it creates such an impact. So this quilt, for example, has in memory of alumni, students, staff, faculty, Stanford University, those who have died of AIDS. Um, a quilt like this, has attached animals, stuffed animals, photographs, the rainbow ribbon. It has two really important blocks on it. One of Ryan White, who was a young hemophiliac who acquired HIV through a blood transfusion and became the poster child for the disease. And then it has Keith Herring, the artist, the graffiti artist, who also died at a really young age from the disease. So it has people who are well known, and then a block like this, which is so simple and almost, you know, the name Gary over in the corner, and yet, you know, another life lost. So the block, it, it, it's an amazing folk art project and a project that touches people in so many ways. This quilt is very artistic. Um, Carl Daddio, 1948 to 1994. I mean, I guess what the impact for me is everyone is so young. They're in, in their 30s. And um, anyway, this piece is, is very elaborately decorated. Someone took a lot of care in creating it. So, you know, I think that people will be able to come in to this 
gallery and see these quilts and be really moved by them and then go to the screen and and, and get the realization of the depth and tremendous loss of an impact that this disease has had.